what's up and welcome along to another edition of Tea and Tech with myself, Mr. B. This is a podcast where we talk all things tech, all st- whilst enjoying a nice cup of tea. It's as simple as that. If you want to reach out to me on any of the socials, it's Mr. BK Official. Or if you're watching this on YouTube, you can leave a comment down below. If there's anything that you think I should be looking into for the next video, please keep me updated if there's any interesting stories and I will make sure to include it for the next one. So let's start off this with a public service announcement. Now this has come off the back of some news back in December where there were some glitches and bugs with Zoom supposedly uh, leaving the microphone on on your device after you've left a meeting. Now this was only being uh, and seemed to be an issue with Apple. Um, So what has happened this week is that they've come out with an update stating that the latest version 5.9.3 Uh, eliminates that issue. Now they did say this back in December that 5.9.1 was the bug fix for that. However, it didn't seem to do the job even though the release notes uh, notes stated it did. Now they're suggesting 5.9.3 is the way forward after Zoom has acknowledged a bug that appears to cause the microphone on Macs running Mac OS Monterey to stay on even after leaving a meeting. Now, users have been complaining about this since December, and as I mentioned, there was a release in December also to try and fix it, um, but obviously didn't do the job. Um, The orange recorder indicator light in the control center appears when Zoom isn't being used. This is uh, an indicator light. It's a privacy feature introduced into Monterey that warns you when an application is using your microphone. So on the Apple devices, obviously you've got the green light, that shows when your cameras are being used. Uh, And on iPhone, it has a little indicator as well stating that your microphone or your camera is being used. A Zoom representative uh, commented stating that Zoom experienced a bug relating to the Zoom client for macOS, which could show the orange indicator light continued to appear after having left a meeting call or webinar. The representative also noted that the uh, update 5.9.3 which was released in late January, will fix this issue. Um, The Zoom client for Mac OS 5.9.3 released on January 25th fixed a bug involving uh, involving the failure to properly terminate the microphone use post-meeting. So Zoom have acknowledged that there was an issue and have seemingly fixed it. So on to story number two, and this one involves uh, cryptocurrency. I'm not sure whether you're into cryptocurrency, know anything about cryptos, cryptocurrencies, or can even say the word cryptocurrency, because I clearly can't. Uh, Binance, which is um, one of the largest, if not the largest, um, cryptocurrency and blockchain infrastructure provider, has invested $200 million in Forbes just two years after suing it for defamation. $200 million investment on part of the iconic business information brand. That money is part of a $400 million private investment in public equity arrangement set up for Forbes to go public by merging with a special purpose acquisition company or SPAC. The deal makes for an interesting milestone showing how Web3 firms have reached their let's buy a media outlet moment kind of like Time Warner and AOL. But this arrangement also brings together uh, Binance and Forbes, the media outlet it sued for defamation in 2020, claiming it suffered millions in losses over an article suggesting that Binance's elaborate corporate structure was designed to intentionally um, deceive regulators and surreptitiously provide from crypto investors in the United States. Binance wound up dropping that lawsuit early last year, and the article remains available on uh, Forbes.com. Now, interestingly, just to add to that story, uh, Forbes is also the home to a number of articles written by the Crocodile of Wall Street, aka Heather Morgan, who was arrested this week with her husband, uh, accused by the Department of Justice of attempting to launder $3.6 billion of Bitcoin 
that had been stolen from Bitfinex. Okay, we should move on to the next story, which is uh, all about Netflix and Marvel. So if you're a Marvel fan, you will have probably watched uh, one of the numerous TV series that have been on Netflix. Well, the bad news is um, that it will disappear later this month. So before Disney Plus, Netflix Marvel TV shows were pushing the edge of MCU adjacent content on streaming. But soon you won't be able to watch Daredevil, Luke Cage, Jessica Jones, Iron Fist, Punisher or The Defenders on Netflix anymore. Uh, news of the pending removal surfaced earlier today on what's on Netflix as viewers noticed flags on the shows in Netflix app. Um, spokespeople for Netflix and Disney who declined to be named publicly have confirmed that the Netflix license ends February 28th. Uh, Polygon points out that this shift is coming just after a few characters from Netflix shows popped up in Marvel, Marvel comic, sorry, Marvel Cinematic Universe. Uh, Charlie Cox brought his Daredevil character into Spider-Man No Way Home. Um, and Vincent D'Onofrio played Kingpin in Hawkeye on, on Disney. Uh, this brings an end to the partnership that started back in 2012 and first hit our TV screens with the premiere of Daredevil on Netflix in 2015. By 2018, all of these shows had been canceled, leaving them in limbo ever since. So, now's your chance to get onto Netflix and watch them quickly before February 28th. Now, this week was news from Samsung, uh, Samsung and the latest addition to their range which was the s22 so we had the s22s s22 plus and s22 ultra i believe um, but interesting news is that samsung phones um, were part made from fishing nets samsung has announced a range of new galaxy smartphones which we know about uh, the, the firm talked of the use of recycled materials such as repurposed fishing nets and used water bottles. Its Galaxy for the Planet is a five-year plan to eliminate plastics and packaging and stop manufacturing waste going to landfill. Now this is this is an interesting one. I find this fascinating. The nylon fishing nets are turned into poly uh, polyamide resin pellets using the production of brackets which hold the volume and power keys in place. Discarded water bottles and CD cases are also being used to create components. Today, most consumers have no clue on how damaging it is for the planet to regu regularly renew their smartphone hardware. Hmm. Ben Wood, chief analyst uh, with research firm CCS Insight, said it was encouraging to see Samsung talking about its efforts to improve the sustainability of its products, but pointed out the most important thing phone manu manufacturers can do for the environment is to make long lasting devices. I think we're all ready for that. Uh, you know, updating your devices every year is a bit too much. Now, interesting stats uh, on Samsung versus Apple. Uh, in the UK, 40% of adults with smartphones have an iPhone versus 33% which own a Samsung. In the US, 51% are iPhone versus 29% Samsung. In France, 22% Apple and 41% Samsung. In Australia, 43% iPhone, 38% Samsung. Some interesting stats there. There. Uh, so the new range includes Samsung Galaxy S22, the S22 Plus and the 22 Ultra. Now the 22 Ultra from what I can see is essentially the Note. Um, the Note hasn't been around for a number of years and Samsung seemed to have stopped producing the Note uh, but the Ultra seems to have stepped into that category with the S Pen lodged inside as well. Uh, so yeah, interesting one. I mean, it's a great looking phone. Uh, the Ultra has additional cameras on the back, but I won't go into that now. That is for another video. Now, are you an Apple um, AirTag user? Personally, when this came out, I thought, 
what's the point? Why would you need air tags? Apart from the obvious, yes, their GPS tracking, which is the whole point. You can put it on your luggage, you can put it in a wallet, and by using your Find My on an Apple device, you can then track down where that is globally, anywhere in the world, as long as the AirTag still has battery. A um, bit of a gimmick, I thought. There was lots of videos online of people seeing how it worked and how far they could get their um, AirTags into famous places like the White House. Um, but news has come out that some people um, are misusing the devices. Not surprised, really. Um, Apple plans to introduce a number of changes to make it harder to misuse AirTags to track someone. The button-sized devices are designed to work with Apple's Find My network to locate lost items. The company said it changes uh, said its changes to the device will make suspicious tags easier to find and alert users earlier that an AirTag may be traveling with them. And this comes after some scary news of um, a number of women, I believe, in the UK, uh, who said they were getting notifications on the device to say that uh, they were being, uh, an AirTag was tracking them. Uh, let me find exactly what it says. Um, devices being misused, track people by hiding them in a car or on personal items such as a bag. As part of the changes to make misuse harder, Apple said every user setting up the AirTag for the first time will see a message warning that using the device to track people without consent is a crime in many regions. Well, a warning sign is not really going to do it. Um, Apple announced that people will be alerted earlier that an unknown AirTag is traveling with them. So if the AirTag is not registered to your device or registered to your Apple account, in theory, you will now get a notification earlier. How soon that is, I'm not sure, but you will get a notification to say that there is an air tag that is on you or around you. Interesting. Um, and then let's move on to an interesting story, which uh, looking online over the last couple of weeks, I seem to have noticed a lot of stories about drones um whether that's new regulations or straight up banning of them uh, in the region where i am in the middle east there is a ban on drones now unless you use them uh, as part of your business in which case you need certain permissions to hold and use those drones which makes sense but the hobbyist can no longer take a drone out and fly it around this news is slightly similar to that in that China-made drones may be relaying information to Beijing, warned Taiwanese experts. Now this could be a little bit of a tit for tat, but experts in Taiwan have warned that the Chinese-made drones used by the country's private companies and individuals could be transferring information back to Beijing. Many countries prohibit the public sector from using Chinese information and communication related products. Therefore, Taipei should consider cooperating with the NGOs to regularly test Chinese products and share the results with the public. In the past, uh, Xiaomi, Huawei and ZTE mobile phones, as well as DJI drones, which is probably the world's most, um, most sold drones, have been found to have data transmission software settings in the firmware. Hmm. Therefore, the US 2020 National Defense Authorization Act restricted the federal government from procuring Chinese drones, according to Taiwanese news. Chinese citizens and enterprises have the ob obligation to support, assist and cooperate in national intelligence operations in accordance with Article 14 of China's National Intelligence Law. Regarding the rule, whenever Beijing asks, asks Chinese manufacturers to provide relevant information, they cannot refuse. When private businesses or individuals use Chinese drones, relevant images and other important data may be sent back to Chinese manufacturers, which may then be forwarded to the Chinese government authorities. Theoretically, Chinese-made drones should be completely banned, said Li Chung Hishin a professor in the Department of Electrical Engineering at the uh, National Chengkung University. 
This is an interesting one for me. I I, I love the flight drones. I had a, a Phantom 3 Pro. I have a, a DJI Spark entry level. And I also have uh, a <laughs> fascinating drone in the shape of an egg, which I will post a link to one of the videos here. If you're watching on YouTube, I, um, I did a video all about that particular drone. Um, they're fascinating to play with, have fun with. The camera technology, technology that is being used on them now is incredible at such a light weight as well. Um, gone are the days where you had a big cinema camera hanging off this huge drone or RC helicopter in the earlier days. Now you can get the uh, cinematic footage and quality, cinematic quality footage from a device the size of a small laptop. Okay, well, I think that's probably it on the news for this week. We kept it relatively short. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget Mr. BK Official if you want to reach out to me, if there's any stories you think I should be looking at. Um, I will also be posting some videos on my YouTube channel uh, over the next few days um, talking about uh, this little bugger that's in front of me here. So if you're watching this on YouTube, this is being filmed on the Sony ZV-E10, which I have a story to tell about that. Uh, I'm filming currently with the Sigma 16mm 1.4. Um, so I will be posting some videos on that, as well as some interesting videos on two separate Boya microphones, B-O-Y-A. Um, so keep an eye out on my YouTube channel for that. As I said, Mr. BK Official is the socials. Uh, thanks for listening, and I will get you on the next one. Wow.